Hi, everybody. I'm tuning in to show you a little trick I've figured out uh, or, or was kind of informed about regarding uh, Firefox multi-account containers. That's this plug in here. Um, and I wanted to share with everybody. So this plug in multi-account containers, see multi-account containers. Um, this is a wonderful extension if you're using Firefox that allows you to open an individual tab with its own cookie and cache container uh, or, or privacy, basically. Anything that you open in a certain context will have its own rules. So you can log into multiple Google accounts, for instance, um, and have them all open in the same browser, just in individual tabs. There is um, some extra stuff that's built on top of this. Uh, there's a, a Firefox container that is specifically designed to limit all of the Firefox activity, activity and trackers that, are, that you'll run into around and route them back into the Firefox container, even when it's not open. Uh, that builds on top of this. Um, it's just a really, really great plugin. Um, and I'm talking about it. Let's see if I can actually show you. Here we go. Here we go. The Firefox multi-account container. Uh, extension. Now, I've got that installed here, and I wanted to talk a little bit about um, two uses that I recently discovered for it. Um, manage containers. Let's go ahead and remove these. So I will build them up with you live, okay? So uh, by default, it comes with a personal, a work, banking, shopping, email, uh, and my Firefox container out of this, fire, this or Facebook container out of this Facebook one. Um, it's wonderful when I'm in work mode, I'm logged into all my work services, and I can keep it kind of contextualized, and it's great. Uh, very easy to switch over and kind of feel the safety of, of information not leaking between those contexts. But uh, what I recently discovered is that each of these containers has the ability to route its own proxy. So the first thing I thought of when that came up was I have Tor installed. If I were to just run Tor here, it's going to fail because it's already running. Uh, I'm, I'm on Linux, so it was apt install Tor. Uh, in, in fact, it's, let's see, apt list installed, I believe it is. Grep Tor grep tor there we go uh and yes tor um is down here and that is installed uh and as you can see when you have tor installed it automatically sets up a sox listener at the loopback address 127.001 on port 9050. so if i wanted to use tor in firefox without having to do any extra plugins i can Say manage containers. I'm going to add a new container. I'm going to call this one Tor. I like this orange for Tor. This kind of dark, almost reddish color. Now let's do this this orange here. I'm going to pick the goat, uh, and then we need to configure this thing with a proxy. So I'm going to say socks one twenty seven dot zero dot zero dot one. 90.50. Well, I can't type when I'm on camera. Uh, apply to container, and that's it. And now we have this container available here for for Tor. Now I have uh, see Cosmic Voyage. This is a site that I run, and it is available. Um, maybe there we go. Cosmic. Thanks. It's available on Tor. So if I were to say curl dash v Cosmic voyage, um, one of the headers that comes back on this uh, is an onion location. So this, this is a wonderful little thing here. If you're running Tor browser, it'll automatically detect that and reroute. So if I were to paste that in over here, uh, well, it doesn't work, right? Because I'm not in a Tor browser. But if I decide to open this in a new container and I say I'm going to use the Tor container, then magically it works. Now I have Tor running in Firefox, but only in a specific specific container. Awesome. So what about other proxies? Well, um, rpchicken.com. Let's see. My, my home IP is up here. Um, 
uh, let's say I wanted to proxy this through one of my web servers. Now, I, I run uh, gopher.black. That is a gopher server, and I've got some other stuff hosted on there. Um, and I happen to have this lovely alias here. Let's bring it to the top of the page. Alias um, proxy, which is SSH dash capital D, uh, a port. I like my little leap port here, dash Q, dash C, dash N. All of the above, basically, it's going to um, set up a general SOX proxy for all of my traffic um, on port 1337. Anything that goes to this port is going to push to that SSH connection. So if I were to run proxy, which is, remember, this command here, and then point it at one of my servers, go for a black, um, then we would hit my 2FA code. So I've got 2FA on that server. I think I typed that wrong. There we go. All right. And now that that's set up, anything to port 1337 is going to redirect. So right now, this is coming from my mobile internet in Iceland. Uh, but let's set up another container. We'll manage a new container. I'm going to call this one ad hoc uh, proxy. And we'll do this like little spyglass or uh, sunglasses thing. And in here, I'm going to say, whoops, I have a meeting. Uh, in here, Now, what am I doing? Manage this container. Thank you. Proxy. Socks 127.0.01. Port 1337 this time for that. Apply to the container. All right. Now, IP chicken. I'm going to open that on my ad hoc proxy. And I am now coming from Go for Black. So, obviously, if you have a Socks 5 proxy that's pointing to a VPN, you can use it in that way. I really like this little um, quick proxy because what it means is I can throw up the a proxy to any one of my servers that allows SSH uh, port forwarding uh, anyway, and I can then map that activity into a tab. So I hope you found that useful. I know I did. Um, and I, I hope you'll check it out and, and try it out. Let me know if it works for you. If you have any other tricks, uh, if you're using OpenVPN or something, and you have a, a quick script to hit, you know, Rise Up VPN or ProtonVPN in a certain tab, let me share that in the comments. Thanks. Take care.